Welcome, everyone, to another very special edition of Geeks of the Roundtable. Today, we're talking news and fan castings and Dragon Ball, which is going to be our main event. And, of course, I'm not alone here. Today, I have with me, as always, my co-host, Zach Pope. How are you doing, Zach? I recognize I should have wore a Dragon Ball Z shirt. I wore yeah. a Venom shirt for some That's reason. True. Um, and I also noticed that I have a bunch of Dragon Ball Z statues over there, but I decided to not put them in the background yeah. but i have a baby yoda so it's okay, okay. uh so th yeah man it's always very fun to do this uh this is a weird week because i finally got, went back to work so um i don't have as much free time anymore which sucks because like my work opened and well not open but like we're preparing to open and then we were like and then the gyms were like hey we're open too and i'm like i don't got fucking time for you dude <laughs> but, yeah i gotta find time but yeah man it's fun it's fun. Um, got to watch some cool movies this week, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk other things. All right, and we have a very special guest with us today. We got Donnie Newber. How are you doing, man? Welcome to the I'm show. I'm doing good, man. Uh, thanks for having me. I just want to let you guys know I haven't woke up this early in like two months, so should feel. By the way, feel, did I say your last name good. right? I'm sorry if I didn't. Yes, you did. Okay. Uh, did you shave your head? I did. Oh, okay. Do you like I it? Did. I don't know, and I messed up the back. There's, like, a line because I went too short, and I just, you know, just saw the clippers, and I just went for it. You should have shaved the beard, too. No. no. You can't do that, Keep bro. Beard, dude. Yes. I shaved my head, too, in case you guys haven't noticed. Uh, so, I can't see anything. I don't know. Oh, you can't see us? Oh, you can't see yeah. us. No. Oh, can't. that's okay. That's how Cody was. Just just listen yeah. to our voices. As long as okay. you can hear us, that's that's Okay. Good. That's the only important thing. Okay, guys. And we, we can see you. So. Yeah, we can oh, okay. see you. Perfectly fine. As long as okay. that works. Well, we got a lot of news to talk about. Uh, even at the last minute, some news came out. But let's start with a big one. Let's start with the one that is, I think, the most at stake, whether it happens or not. And earlier this week, there I think it was a rumor. It hasn't been confirmed since. But there's at least a rumor that Amazon is interested in buying AMC theaters. Which to me, like, is great. It could save the the theaters from disappearing. The studios need it. Uh, we need it. Everyone needs it. Everyone needs the theater, especially AMC, which is like the biggest company in the world. I think. Uh, I I like this, even though it's just a rumor. If it happens, I'll be more than happy. And I think Amazon is kind of a prime company to to buy the the theaters because. Yes, they're a studio, but they're not only a studio. They're much more than that. Uh, how do you guys feel about it? Well, talking about Amazon, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, everyone shops at fucking Amazon. They're so convenient. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't love all their practices. I mean, that's just the fucking truth. Uh, when it comes to buying the theaters, I, I like it because, again, they are saving a company. Mm -hmm. But I also wonder, okay, well, what are the changes? You know yeah. what I mean? Because AMC's also been bought before by that. Um, yeah. Was it a was it a Chinese company or it something was, like that? I'm forgetting the name, but Wanda was it Wanda? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and they didn't do anything with it, which I mean, that could happen. The same thing here, but also, and here's the thing: AMC is only in bankrupt. A lot of people don't understand this: is that they went out of they're going out of business because or filed for bankruptcy because they did so many upgrades to all their theaters, and then the yeah. coronavirus hit. So, yeah. like, they couldn't get the substantial money to get, you know what I mean? Like, they put everything into it, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, not going to say every AMC looks great, because the two, two in Arizona that I've gone to looked great. And then a couple months later, it was ghettofied. So, I, <laughs> I, I like it. I just need to see, like, what is a Amazon going to do with it, you know? And then, plus, they are a studio. So, are they are AMC films only or are amazon films only gonna premiere at amc's theaters yeah you know so and that could happen that's a world that we could live in donnie yeah. what about you i don't know if i mean it is amazon so they might do it but i don't see them just putting only amazon stuff at amc if they own it that'd be kind of risky well but, well the way i meant it is like <clears throat> they'll only premiere their films there like i can't go to a harkins and watch like one of the amazon films yeah. Oh, Which would okay. Be disappointing. Okay. Yeah, so. that's yeah. I don't know. It's like up in the air, really, because Amazon has done some like okay things when they take over places, but some of them they just completely redesign and change. And the like, 
I think I know what AMC you're talking about out mm-hmm. there, but the one out, the one over here by my house, uh, it's not that bad. It's pretty nice. I go there. Uh, when I we don't just have go breaking news. By the way. Breaking news. We just have huge okay. breaking news. Okay. Huge fucking breaking news. It's about uh, a new Star Wars series coming to Disney Plus. Oh, okay. Um, the people who have broken everything for the Mandalorian, uh, Rosario Dawson is officially getting her Ahsoka Tano, uh, Star Wars series. Okay. So, it's any any news on like timeline wise? That's what I'm trying to look for right now. So you guys keep talking, but I'll I'll keep looking. Uh, yeah, I I don't have a lot of stake like when it comes to AMC specifically because there's no AMC theaters around here, but they are the biggest company in the world. I mean. Amazon legally couldn't couldn't prohibit other studios' movies from playing there, so yeah. there's nothing to worry about on that front. But what you brought up that um, they could um, only premiere their movies on AMC theaters that would be interesting. At least like big big premieres, that would be kind of intriguing to say the least, because. Yes, they're the biggest company in the theater, but there's a lot more. Even in the United States alone, there's a lot more theaters. There are not AMC. There's a lot other, quote-unquote, big companies. Mm -hmm. There's Regal. um, There's another one that I'm forgetting. (laughs) Is Cinemark in the United States? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's only one in Arizona, though, I think. Maybe two. Uh, I do want to – so uh, I guess – we can just move on to the next news at this point. Yeah. Um, this is the pretty big thing, and it'll kind of tie into our next mm-hmm. segment. Uh, so Rosario Dawson, um, no official timeline yet, but the thing that it is, it, everyone's, it's rumored that the Leslie Headland, the girl who did Russian Doll, who's already announced oh, yeah, to yeah, do yeah. a Star Wars series, it's rumored that that's her Star Wars series. Is that it isn't? Yeah. Is that she's taking the helm for Ahsoka, which I don't believe. Um, that I mean that's. It's not everyone's kind of looking at her. I don't believe that that's her series because it would be a Dave Filoni thing. Mm, that's but I could be wrong. She could he could be telling her everything to do for it. Yeah, and he can but still be a producer on it. Yes, so I could see it happening. I could not. I love Russian Doll. I think um, uh, I think a Ahsoka Tano series will kill. For me, this is what I've already said. I want a three season Ahsoka Tano series. One taking place exactly. Um, after Clone Wars, heading into Rebels, one taking after after Rebels during the Mandalorian time, and then one leading into the sequel series. And I think that's all you need to do. I and I think that will end her whole story perfectly. What yeah. about what about you guys? I, I could see that happening. I don't know about the one right after Clone Wars because maybe I mean Rosario Dawson is not old, but she's kind of older than Ahsoka would be at that age, and even with all the makeup, I don't think it would look right Mm -hmm. but i'm a huge fan of ahsoka i'll welcome her show i actually do believe that at least it could be the show from the creator of russian doll because the way they described it when the news broke is like a kung fu slash uh, martial arts based show with a strong female presence Uh, yeah uh, with uh, a female lead that that would make a lot of sense again i'm not saying it is i'm not saying i'm betting on it being but it could very well be now i ask you this does ahsoka die peacefully or does she die fucked up wise i think she dies fucked I, i i'm telling you dude the best way you tie it in is have kylo kill her that's the or snoke or snoke I mean, Kylo or Snoke would really work. Or what if, Or what if they want to go to the extreme? What if they want to take her to Exegol? Like, that's where she ends up going, and Palpatine kills her. I think she dies peacefully. I don't know, man. It's just a feeling I have. If anything, I would I would say there's a chance that Kylo kills her. But they're Star not going to Adam drive her back. Star Wars. You don't know that. You don't know that. Mm-hmm. I don't for, think, for, for, think, sure, about think about it. Think about it. Think about it for a very tiny, tiny, tiny scene. Tiny, tiny, tiny scene. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying I don't see it. And I'm pro- I could be wrong. I could very well be wrong. I just don't see it happening. Tiny, tiny. <laughs> I don't care what, that what do you it's think, Donnie? Scene. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's Star Wars. It's I know, Clone I, Wars. You, do you know who Ahsoka is? No. 
Okay, have you seen The Mandalorian? Because the next bit of news is about The Mandalorian. I have I, The Mandalorian. I, I like The Mand. I watched all of that. But. So I'm gonna tell okay. you this, Donnie. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about the next casting news. Yeah. So uh, yes, did we get to talk about? We didn't get to talk about Bo Katan last week. So no. we can include her. Yeah. So Katie yeah. Sackhoff, who voices Bo Katan in Clone Wars and Rebels, she is being brought back. Uh, to play the role in live action in The Mandalorian Season 2, along with Temora Morrison playing Boba Fett, which I believe we already talked about. And uh, he... I don't know, but we are talking about it now. <laughs> He's playing Boba Fett in Season 2. Uh, it's supposedly a very small role, one episode, maybe two. He is rumored to also be playing Rex. And yesterday... Playing a pivotal role, but a mystery role, was Timothy Oliphant. He's been cast uh, in Mandalorian Season 2 from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, from Deadwood, from Justified, a show which I've never watched. Uh, what do you guys think of all these casting news breaking in through last week? I'm going to let our resident Star Wars fanatic, Donnie Newber, talk about it. Yeah, sure. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, like I watch. I've seen all the Star Wars films except for the last one, and then, but like the Mandalorian, it just like hooked me. It was like simple, mm -hmm. and it was just like new, and I, I don't know, something about and it. I liked it. Have you watched any Clone Wars? Because your kids yeah. would. I, I mean, if you want to get your kids into Star Wars at all, that's the show to do it. And oh. I saw that you're making your one of your little girl watch uh, Avatar, right? Yes. She, yeah. yeah. She's she's go, she's burning through that too really she hooked yeah. yeah she's like already trying to like she's like well what what are we and i was like well i don't, I don't know gotta figure it out <laughs> that's cool uh so okay for me bo katan i fucking shit my pants over i'm like it's the most obvious thing and i know there's a lot of people complaining about like well why can't we get the original voice actress to do ahsoka i actually do understand that complaint i yeah. she's not it's not like she has never acted but I also get why they went with Rosario Dawson for this, because yeah. Rosario Dawson is a bigger name. Yeah. Um, Katie Sackhoff is a name. You know what I mean? And the other reason is Bo-Katan is not going to get her own spinoff series. That, that's just yeah. the honest truth. She not, may be animated, yeah. but I think it's really cool that we're getting Bo-Katan. We're getting Rex, though. I mean, it's... I, we have to. If Tamara Morrison is coming back as Boba Fett, which I, I've been saying, I don't think he takes the mask off for Boba Fett at all. I think it kind of mm -hmm. takes away from him, mm -hmm. but I mean, he'll obviously have his mask off for Rex. And that's why I think if it's, if we're getting Bo-Katan, if we're getting Ahsoka, they're setting up that we're gonna also going to get Rex. We're going to get Sabine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm telling you, I think Sabine's the next casting we get. I think Sabine's the next casting we get. I think we get it like later this week or next I, week. I, I hope. I hope it's not Sh Sasha Banks from the. I don't. Th I at this point I don't think it is. I don't I think it is. So hope you're right because I there's do there's really a gut feeling first. in me because it when she was casted it was so early on mm -hmm. that I think it's earlier in the episodes. I think all these ones that we're talking about are way later, like mm -hmm. way later. I think Boba Fett's probably in the middle, and I think the Ahsoka stuff's at the end. Okay. Because so and I think a lot. I think actually a lot of that will tie into the finale. I, I actually really think that's going to be a lot of the finale stuff, especially p considering I don't think Moff Gideon <clears throat> gets past this season. I think they end up doing him off this season. Yeah, I, and I think Sabine that. gets her dark saber back. But I also think it comes in to say that Thrawn, I, I there's something in me that says they're going to introduce Thrawn at the end of the season oh. and he's going to be the main villain for the rest of the Mandalorian. Do you think Timothy Oliphant could be Thrawn? Because I don't think I, it's a fit. He's I'm a great actor, this. but I don't think that's a fit at all. I could see it. Okay. I don't love the choice. I would rather him be old. Donnie's just sitting here like, what <sighs> the fuck are they talking about? No, you're, yeah, go right, on, bro. We're going to talk about the casting. I don't want to happen. Or yeah. Just, yeah. But I I don't mind him as Ezra. And I know you, I get why you're I, – I know you and me talked about this, Ren, why you don't want to know that Ezra's alive and stuff like that. I don't mind it, though. Um, I think it would be kind of cool. I mean, it's the same thing with like when we saw Rebels, Ahsoka was fucking alive, and we're like, oh shit, yeah. she's alive, you but, know. But I want to see that when the show is about him or Ahsoka and yeah. Sabine searching for him, you know. I want that reveal on their show, not on what somebody if, else's. What if they hire a Mandalorian 
to help them find him. That can work and that's a little two, better. And that's a two-arc thing, and it ends with Ezra. That can work, but again, I still have the same problem that I don't want his search to be on somebody else's show, you know? Because he's already such a character of importance that we know and fell in love with. He had his own show, and now his mystery is going to be solved on somebody else's show. Yeah, I also it, have to say it this. Feels odd. What are your feelings about not having, like, any... Th- I mean, we don't know if this, but Hera or Zeb. Like, what about them? You know what I mean? Like, aren't yeah. they, they're still alive. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know Hera's Hera, still alive. at least. Hera's Is probably Zeb alive. alive? I Zeb? mean, he survived the show, so... That's what I'm talking about. So, oh. I wonder if we'll get a whole... I mean, personally, Zeb can be a CGI character. That's that's just the yeah. honest truth. Zeb Played can be a Michael CGI Chiklis. character. Stop. <laughs> um, and then Hera, I mean, you just have to paint... The, the, maybe Sasha Banks is Hera. I mean, as an alien. I, I, still I wouldn't like mind that either. She has to act, and Sasha Banks and acting don't go together. No. Uh. Sasha Banks just sounds like a porno name. But, uh... <laughs> I mean, She's I'm friends not... with Snoop Dogg, by the way. What? She's friends with Snoop Dogg. She's trying to launch a rap album. Or she has launched a rap album. I'm not sure. Just stop. It's not true? Me. It's so true, dude. dude. I'm gonna start rapping my own album. Um, But I don't... I, I mean I love the choice I love these choices um I'm I personally for me I, I don't I mean I don't want Timothy Elephant to play Ezra either I I don't mind the choice um I kind of dig it yeah. in some ways I don't I kind of dig Miss Thrawn I want him to just be a new character yeah I want I'm I actually now that you brought now that you brought up him bring, being Thrawn I don't want him to be Thrawn but I would like to see him come on as the new villain after Moff Gideon mm-hmm. because Moff Gideon I mean he can't. No. I love Carl Esposito, but it seems like he's going to be a major like foe. I've also yeah. said this. I mean, they say Cad Bane died off screen, but you can always bring him back. When you die off screen, that doesn't mean you died. Exactly. Plus, Palpatine yeah. came back. Just That's saying. That's true. Let's move That's on to the next news. So Donnie can All right. Back. Let's move on to the next news because the, because the author of the book franchise saga, I don't know, whatever. Rick Riordan, 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 he announced on Twitter that a Percy Jackson show is coming to Disney+. Plus. I've never read the books. I watched the first movie and I enjoyed it for what it was. I did not like the second movie at all. Bring it on because it's Greek mythology. That's my thing. So I'll be there to watch it. What do you guys think? Donnie, you start. Uh, I agree. Greek mythology. Greek mythology is something that like I've always been interested in, and I don't think there's enough like movies and shows about them. Yeah, I agree. Do you ever read Percy Jackson? I didn't read them, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. That, did you? Are um, they worth reading? So I've, I've I remember reading the first two, and I really liked them. Um, and I actually really liked the first movie. I hate the second movie. I this is perfect news. I mean, Disney Plus needs series. Mm-hmm. Percy Jackson is a property they own. So at this point, is it gonna do bombs? Is it gonna be an Ar- another Artemis Fowl? I mean, Artemis Fowl should have been a fucking show too. I mean, that's just the truth. Artemis Fowl should have been a show too. I have no idea why they made that into a movie, but besides the point, I like this choice. It's a pretty obvious one. A lot of it's con- gonna come down to casting, though. To be mm-hmm. honest, um, I wonder how big of a newcomer they get for Percy, or do they go kind of bigger? I think they did newcomer. I, I see that happening too, but it's just kind of how Logan Lerman was a newcomer at the time when they did cast yeah. him. So that is true. But I think they need to give him a good supporting cast, like a yeah. really good, because I want this show to succeed. Because the the big news is that each season will be based on a book. So the yeah. first season will be Lightning Thief, second season will be whatever, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I I really love that. I think that's very smart, and that's how these books should be adapted. I mean, I love the Harry Potter movies, but could you imagine if we had? I mean, I'm gonna say this. If Harry Potter never became a movie and HBO Max was coming out and they own the rights to Harry Potter, there would be a Harry Potter show instead. Yeah. One hundred percent there would be a Harry Potter show. Yeah. There there still should be a Harry Potter show. The fact that they have not even announced one yet is fucking insane to me. Like uh, that is insane uh, to me. Yeah. Like they're more bank I'll I'll tell you this. The Harry Potter franchise is bigger than the D C franchise right now. True. So um yeah no i'm excited for this i'm more excited for the next disney plus thing though why don't you bring that up because i have no opinion on that one okay so 
Disney Plus, there's a report going around the third, which again, they it's need, a rumor. It's just a rumor. Yeah, it's a huge rumor, but it's from a source that's they've come with certain things. So Kingdom Hearts Disney, it looks it's said that King, Disney Plus is looking at Kingdom Hearts to mm-hmm. like bring into a show. I love this idea. Um, I think this is very smart. It also there's three things to this show though. It depends how dark they go. It depends how close to the source material they stay to, at least somewhat. I don't. I. I mean, I. I just want them to do Sora Donald goofy at most for the characters. Um, but I don't really care about the adventures they go on, if that makes sense. Okay. And I do not. I do not want it animated. I do not want it animated. You want live action? I want fucking live action. Huh. I want. Okay. It. If it's animated, I don't care at all for it. I, I okay. literally, like, would be like... Like, I'll watch it because it's fucking Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. But I won't care at all for it. I want this Roger Rabbit type things to come That's back. That's what I was going to say. How would you feel if, like... I, F- Sora, is that the main, in the main yeah. character? Yeah. So how would you feel if Sora and the other human characters were live action, but then Goofy, Donald, and the Disney characters were, like, Roger Rabbit animated? I'd be fully for it. It would be a little bit weird, but just because of how the game plays out, I think there's a way that you could do it Detective Pikachu style with the 3D. Um, and that's what I've been saying. I mean, like, Detective Pikachu, when that movie was announced, I'm like, how the hell are you going to do Pokemon live action? And I thought, for the most part, it worked. Um, especially in the designs of the the Pokemon, at least. I think they all yeah. looked really cool. Okay. Um, and I think I would like to see other ones. Do, I mean, they did fucking Sonic, too. Sonic worked. There yeah. is a way to do these characters live action. You just have to... I'm not talking about quality of the movies, but I'm talking about animation-wise. Um, what about you, Donnie? Have you ever played Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, I was actually up until... Like, I didn't I didn't even finish the third one, but, like, up one and two, I was, like, super obsessed with... I didn't play too many of, like, the... Like, the Game Boy ones and yeah. stuff. I, which I want which is series. dumb. They're, 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 I will give Square Enix this. They literally said, oh, we're going to include all the spinoffs into the third one. Like, literally, it all ties in. And I own all. I bought, I bought like, the collection when it came out. Yeah. But I just didn't even. Like, I tried to play, like, did you play, like, the card one? That one was just. It's terrible. It's so bad. I was like, I don't even want to finish this. Yeah, I don't. But, like, that. so I, I think a live action would work. Oh, sorry. Uh, but um, I don't know. Thinking the way that they did Sonic, it. It'd be kind of weird to see Donald and Goofy like that, but I think they could they could pull it off. You? I'm gonna come. <laughs> they have the budget for it. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is true. Now I'm the one who's like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" <laughs> hey, well then you Brent, got Riku Brent, and everyone how, in how there. How does this make you feel? Originally, they're supposed to have a Star Wars level in Kingdom Hearts 3, but they had to cut it because Lucasfilm didn't want it. But they said that eventually they would want a Star Wars in the Kingdom Hearts world. Does that make you intrigued? To play that specific level? Sure. Yeah. About everything okay. else? No. <laughs> you have to, to get there. And the story is so hard to follow along. The story is just I, so I, I, the story, weird. The story is fucking convoluted two of my best friends are like the biggest fans of that franchise they tried to get me onto it at one point i'm like what the fuck i mean i I, the only the one thing i remember about the games is that they like to eat ice cream yes that's it so i'll tell you this which one did you play i didn't play anyone i i I, they just tried to explain the story and the lore to me what? You can't do that. You can't do that. You yeah, that was probably number two if they were doing the ice cream. Yeah, thing. yeah, it's the second one. Um, so I'll say this: I the the best one is number two. Two is fucking phenomenal. Two is two is an okay. excellent game. Three is the best made one, mm-hmm. but it's also the most lackluster one, if that makes sense. Did I, you finish I, it? Oh yeah, dude, I finished it in one. I I literally took three days off and fucking beat the whole game. But the replayability in three is garbage. Like, there's no Sef- There's a Sephiroth boss battle in one and two, but there's none in three. Sephiroth? Isn't yeah, Sephiroth? Yeah, there's Final, Final, Final Fantasy Final... characters are in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of Final <laughs> See, Fantasy. I have no idea what we're talking about. But they got rid of a lot of them for three. Okay. It makes no sense. But, uh, yeah, you want to get to the uh, next part? Just before we go to the next one, I just need to tell you something. Speaking of games, I just got The Last of Us this week. The first oh, one. The first one. Fucking finally. Uh, so I'm ready to play it after I beat The Last Guardian, which I'm playing right now. 
But let's go into our next casting. So there's also a rumor, fan casting. We're going to do a little bit of fan casting. There's a rumor that a live action uh, Atlantis The Lost Empire movie is in development. Uh, that's really all there is to the rumor. There is no mention of how faithful or new it's going to be. No mention of casting, directors, writers, producers. It's so no. early. So from what yeah. I understand, it's very early in development. Yeah. Like yeah. they're just planning. Yeah. Like, and it's just in development. It could very well yeah. get shut down at any mm -hmm. moment. There, so there's, there's not... pro I would probably say this. There's probably a writer on it at this point. We just don't yeah, know who it is. Maybe. Yeah. So. so we're going to do a little bit of fan casting. Uh, Zach, do you want to start or do you want me to go? Uh, I'll, I'll start. Okay. Um, so I'll, we're going to do Milo, of course, right, first. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's Andrew Garfield. I, I think really? I would love to see him go into a franchise like this again. Um, I love him as an actor, but I think he would kill this role. The other one I had, I have two other ones. Okay. One that I'm a little bit more positive on than the other, um, but one's Dylan O'Brien. I think, bless you. Thank I you. think Dylan O'Brien could actually really kill the role too. Okay. My other one is, and this is only because I want to see him act in something else because he does the same acting in every, in the same fucking show. It's Grant Gustin. Ooh, that would be I, great. But I also think it's a risk because I don't think he's the best actor, but I also only have judgment because of The Flash. Okay. I don't know how right funny Grant can be, but I think he's a great actor when it comes to emotional. Well, and that's why I said Andrew Garfield. Yeah. I think Andrew Garfield could fucking kill the comedic things. Yeah. Um, before we get to you, Ren, Donnie, do you remember any of yours before, since you left your list? <laughs> so for... Who'd you say for Milo? Milo, Milo yeah, yeah, for Milo. Um, I saw one floating around that I thought was interesting. Uh, Cole, Cole Sprouse. Ooh. I thought that he could be kind of good because I remember him from like Zach and Cody, and like he was like, yeah. I guess he liked the comedy aspect, getting getting worked in there, and like he he kind of looks similar, so I think that he could fit it. I could see it. I could see it. I know he did it for a Halloween costume one year. Milo. Maybe that was the picture yeah. that I saw. Yeah, huh. he dressed up as Milo for Halloween one year. Oh, wow. Uh, Grant Gustin, you said that that's a good one, too. I, I really yeah. like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Grant is great. All right, so run go, because I've been pretty anticipating what your choice is going to be. Okay, for Milo, I went... Maybe it's very boring, because it's very obvious, but it's, like, perfect casting to me. But I do really like Grant. He didn't even occur to me, but I went with Tom Holland. Tom no! Holland. No. Yes. No. Yes. I don't yes. hate the. I don't hate it. It's just like he's fucking everywhere. It's yes. it's, it's 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 cast. It's cast white. Not white. There's nothing to do with him. White. I'm, I'm not even. I'm white too. So <laughs> but it's always Tom Holland. It's always Tom he, Holland. He's just too good for. I mean, don't get me wrong. He would he would fucking kill it. But I don't want him in that. And and I accept that. And look, Grant. Like you brought Grant up, I can't say no to that one. He was just the one that I picked, but now I'm going to steal yours. It's either Tom Holland or, or Grant Gustin for you me. You wouldn't want Garfield I, though. I would. I would be totally fine with him. He's just not up there for me. I just. I think Garfield would be so. Because honestly, I I really like Garfield. He's a great actor. I. It's just that I can see Tom Holland and Grant Gustin better suited for this role specifically. Yeah, do you know who my girlfriend said? She said Timothy Chalamet. And that one, I thought I, that one, but I don't think it's a fit. And, he, I, and so look, he's the best star of all the ones we mentioned, to me. Really? Yeah, oh, so he's dude, the best. I would, ar I would argue Andrew Garfield's the best actor. Uh, also, um, Tyler Tompkins started reading that book, Cherry, that Tom Holland's going to be in the movie mm -hmm. for. He said, no way in hell this movie is not a hard R. He said okay. the book is fucking incredible. Okay. And he told me, he's like, I have no idea. I do not see Tom Holland playing this role. Well, he's going to so, show his versatility. I'm Oscar potential, man. Uh, yeah. Let's get the princess Kida. Is that how you said Kida? Yeah, Kida. Kida. Okay. So I have um, my number one choice would be Kiki Palmer. I think Kiki Palmer mm. could fucking destroy this role. But I think it's going to be Letitia Wright because of Shuri. Ooh. Good. And because Disney loves her, and they would probably want her. And I think again, another obvious choice would be Zendaya. They wanted her mm -hmm. for the Little Mermaid. I could see her being Kita, but I kind of wanted to think a little bit outside the box personally. Yeah, I will say, I, I will tell you, mine. yeah, but I will tell you this, Ren. If Tom Holland gets cast, Zendaya doesn't get cast. I if know. Zendaya gets I cast. Know. 
just because the the spider it'll be too big. I know. But um, I really want Kiki. I think Kiki could kill it. Yeah, Kiki could be good. I did go with Zendaya. That was my one. Even though I I totally agree with what she said. If one of the guys cast, the other won't. So let's do Grant Gustin and Zendaya for. And and, that, <laughs> for and I'll be honest on that. I think Zendaya has a better chance of getting cast than Tom Holland. I agree yeah, with that. I agree with Just that. Just because too. she was the up and comer for a yeah. little for the Little Mermaid. I mean, she was. Everyone yeah. thought it was going to be her that had it. So. Yep. Um, uh, so and Zendaya yeah. was y'all's yours, Donnie. Yeah, that was the one that I put oh, for so Kida. All right, okay, so let's, let's go, go Rourke. Yeah, that was my next one. Uh, I got Stephen Lang. I was going to get Stephen Lang, but he was the one that for me. Okay, that's too obvious. And oh, was, really? I thought Tommy yeah. Lee Jones was the most obvious because that was my original cast. I actually I like, thought nah. about Tommy Lee Jones for for another role. Um, for for this one for Rourke, I went with Liam Neeson. I Ooh. don't mind that. Um, I don't mind that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, Donnie, what I, about you? Do you remember who you had for Rourke? I do not, but I like that. Liam Neeson would, wouldn't be bad. Yeah. All right, so this one, Helga. Ren, who do you have? Kate Blanchett. Really? Yeah. I didn't even do I didn't fucking think about Kate Blanchett. I have Charlize Theron. She would be great. I just this, thought I just that rewatched the movie. Action, I said, they should Charlize be around Theron. the same age. It works better if they're around the same age. That is true. That is true. Uh, Donnie, do you remember who you had for Helga? Uh, that's the the blonde one, right? That uh, yeah. I put uh, uh, Kirsten Stewart. I think she would do pretty good in that one. I just want to see her in something else. Yeah. Like what? Because I can really give you good. so many different things. That... Maybe in this. Something okay. that's good. That's what yeah. I, right. I think. What do you mean, dude? She's been in so many good movies. She has. Not recently, but she has. I'd argue with that, but... Who, who would, what would you bring up? I liked Underwater, but I don't think it's great. I liked Underwater. I also I liked Charlie's Angels. I didn't hate it. I, it wasn't, I didn't it wasn't it great. It wasn't great. I'm I, not going to say it's the next best action film. I thought the action was filmed terribly. Yeah, but I, I thought she made the film good. I mean, the whole cast. It. I think the cast made that film good, actually. I I did watch that movie in theaters when it came out. It just time wise, scheduling wise, yeah. I it just didn't happen. I watched it like two months ago by this point when it came out on, on digital. I watched it. It's bad. It's not horrible. I don't have a burning passion to hate it. I thought it was a I, bad movie. I think I it's the best. Kristen Charlie's Stewart Angels movie. alone was the highlight. Mm -hmm. uh, Naomi Scott. It, I mean, I love her. I love her, but her character is horrible. Yeah. It's, writing is atrocious. Everything. It's a bad movie. That's it. But I really like Kristen Stewart. I have nothing against the cast itself. I, I will say one involved. Her, Stewart's best film was Personal Shopper. Yes, that's her best that film. Movie so good. Yeah. So Donnie, if you want to see Kristen Stewart like kill it in a role. It's personal, personal shopper. shopper. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's sure, a hard. I'm not sure if you'll like the movie. It's hard to say if anyone will like the movie. Yeah. But Kristen Stewart in it, she's amazing. Yeah, and I and honestly, I won't even look up what it's about because the synopsis is kind of a lie. Yes. Is it on anything or uh, like? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. It probably yeah. is. Yeah. Um. Let's go to Vinny. Vinny's my next one. Uh, I, okay. I I have this. Um. So when we were rewatching it, I said Colin Farrell, 100. percent should play fucking Vinny. Really? That's my number one choice. But I think oh. Sasha Baron Cohen could also destroy the role of Vinny. Oh. I like that. I yeah. like that a lot. I went with John Turturro. That's a great one, too. That is Dude, amazing. but I didn't even think of Sasha Baron Cohen. That would be amazing. Uh, Donnie, what about you? I don't remember what I put for that one. But I'm just looking at the guy, at the guy's picture. Yeah. He's the Italian ex uh, demolitions expert. Mm -hmm. So like the the army dude. Yeah. I don't I don't remember what I put for that one. Schwarzenegger. That's what everyone else is saying <laughs> on here. Dude, really? Schwar Arnold would kill a Rourke. That's, too. that's what it says that would be next great... to his picture. I just want to, I just want to see Arnold with that mustache and that hair that for sure would look like a toupee in live action. Uh, so I just want to see that. Um. What do you guys have for sweet? I, I went with a pretty obvious choice for sweets. Um, Dude, but I told you my choice. It's I the don't remember. choice. Who? Terry, Terry Crews. Sweet. Yeah, Terry Crews. Terry Crews. Yeah. I saw someone did Isaiah Mustafa, and I went, not a bad choice, 
But when I think of sweet, I think big. Another person put Dwayne Johnson, and I said, nah, I don't want Dwayne in there. He's too big. He's too big of a character or an actor. Oh, um, and stuff is the old Spice guy who was also in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Pretty good. Uh, is that I the like is it. that the doctor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I but I yeah. like Terry Crews the most. I yeah. think he he'll bring the most energy. Um, next one is Ramirez. Ramirez is the the mechanic girl, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, Ali Cravalho to play this role. Oh, who the fuck is that? The voice of Moana. Oh, I don't like that. Really? I have a uh, Gina Rodriguez. Yeah, I don't like that. Well, well, okay. There's a difference though here though. I saw a film at Sundance that changed my whole opinion on her. Okay. So, like she it's uh, it has her and Rachel Evan Woods from uh Westworld. Uh, Westworld, yeah. And it's called Cajillionaire. Um okay. it's 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 not for everyone, but Gina Rodriguez's performance in there is is outstanding. Okay. Really, really good. So that's why I thought of her the first time I saw that. Plus, I I think she's the best part of a lot of the films that she's been in the last couple of month, years. <laughs> I have never seen anything that yeah. made me... Like, I don't hate her as an actress, but I've never seen anything that makes me go, yeah, I want to see her in other stuff. You know? Yeah, I feel. Uh, do you have anyone for this, Donnie? Uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Uh, Letty from Fast and Furious. I mm-hmm. like that. Okay. I like it. I, and I, I thought about her, too. I just thought, like, she's a little older. So I, that's why I went with Gina, but I, I guess I don't, I don't hate you. She, she just got that like attitude. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the next one is the old lady Packard. Um, I Betty didn't White. That one. Betty I didn't fucking. Start, White. I thought of Betty White, but I didn't. I literally very, Betty I fucking White. But since this probably won't come out for another ten years, I don't know how long Betty White has. So <laughs> Helen. Yeah, that's true. So cast the Queen of England because she won't die. Yeah. Um, the mole. This is the uh, one that I'm. I'm super curious. My mine is is, is I I'd like to call it inspired casting from old. You want me to go first? Yeah. Jim Carrey. That's fucking incredible. Guess who I have? <laughs> uh, Steve Carell. Nope. Mark Hamill. Oh. Oh, that I I want to see that just because I want to see Mark Hamill in more live action stuff. Yeah. I I literally. I was watching. I'm like Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill, but Jim Carrey is great. So Steve Carell would be good too. Uh, do you have anyone for a mole, Donnie? Uh, he looks like Danny DeVito to me. <laughs> oh my God, that's so true. And you know what's funny? Danny DeVito could play him. Yeah. All right. He, the, he just cookie? fits that look. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do Cookie? Do you guys do Cookie? No, I don't even. Okay, know I did. I did William H Macy. It's the the Cookie okay. guy. Oh, and then okay. there's Whit. And then there's Whitmore. Who do you guys have for Whitmore? I don't, I don't know who that oh, is. Oh, I did Dick I Van Dyke. I don't know who that is. Whitmore is the guy who sends him on the adventure. Oh. Oh, like, like his, like the, yeah. is it yeah, like the his rich uncle guy. or something? It's his uncle's best, or his grandfather's best friend. I need to rewatch but this I, movie. But I chose yeah, Dick I'm, Van Dyke. I chose Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, he'd be great. Um, And then for King of Atlantis, uh, Marasha Ali. That would be great. Because I think he could hit that moment of him dying. Yeah. He died. Uh, so, <laughs> have you never seen the movie? No, I'm just kidding. No, I have. Oh, I, I, say, I, I was. I like, had to look. I had to look up the characters because. Yeah, I, 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 I need to rewatch this. I know. I, I just glanced, rewatched. So that's I, why. Did I, you? I, I yeah, I did my the, fan casting when I was rewatching uh, it. I glanced over the King of Atlantis character, but I didn't thought about it much. But I'll I'll go with yours, Mahershal Ali. I mean, in anything. So, <laughs> all right, totally. guys. Let's take this one with a grain of salt because it's officially the fifth release date they have scheduled. But New Mutants is back on track, maybe. And it has a release date for August 28th. Do we believe this happens? Yes or no, Zach? Yes. And I think even if another wave hits, it'll go VOD. Okay. 100%. I I just, it'll go VOD. You, You think it'll go VOD? It, they, it, they've been fighting that so hard and i i also say this i think it also goes vod depending on how king of staten island does given king of staten island is not a superhero film but i don't count trolls and scoop that's for fucking parents that's for parents to buy their kids and sit them in front of the fucking tv yep this is like new mutants is like a which i'm so 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 excited for um, I hope we get to see it in theaters, but I, I just see a VOD thing at this point because they're like, fuck it. Let's just get rid of this thing. Yeah. 
Uh, I I hope it does. I really want to see it. The one thing that really makes me happy and confident in this movie is that they're still fighting to get it in theaters. Mm -hmm. Like Disney believes in this movie, and that's a good sign to me. But if for some reason they have to reschedule it, either if it is on the same day that it goes to VOD or they reschedule it for a later date, but it does go to VOD, uh, I'll, I won't be shocked. I'll just be sorry because Ryan, I really you, think you they make a really good point there. And I yeah. never even thought about that. I mean, I'm always worried. Is this movie even going to be fucking good? I mean, I've been saying, I think it is, but I think you're right on that. Why is Disney fighting so hard for this when they have the likes of Antlers, Woman in the Window, and so many other Fox films that they need to still put out? Mm -hmm. They could have put anything in that August slot. And given that week is actually one of the worst weeks for box office, but this exactly. whole year is going to be bad anyways. So New Mutants going there, they're like, we could take this over, make a little bit of a profit, and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's interesting. That is very interesting. Yeah, but... I, it, it, sorry, go ahead. I think it sticks, though. I, I just... The only thing that moves it again is the virus. That I mean, that's yeah. fully the only thing that will move that movie is if the virus strikes again, or if yeah, theaters aren't open to. yet. Yeah, yeah. It it will, but and I know it'll be a bad way, but it just depends how companies are structured now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I do never, I don't see my work closing again. That's just the truth. I do not see my job closing again, and I don't. And if movie movie theaters will not close again, they will very reduced capacity if they have to i hope you're right man if if they do have to reschedule it i think that's the moment where they say well fuck it go to vod uh, or disney plus and, and that's it well i really want to see it in theory i don't want to watch it here yeah. i want to watch it <laughs> same I'm donnie's the same way I completely um, agree. yeah and that's the thing i if it doesn't go on vod i think they hold off till the end of 2021 because that's when it can go on disney plus or hulu because right it's now done, right yeah it's, like, do it's i mean it's, all it's done it's, it's, it's been done for years. It's been done. Yeah. It's been done for like probably a year and a half now. The trailer, the release of the trailer is, is over two and a half years old. The first one. Yes. Really? So this film that was literally film? made. Think about this. This film was probably made almost six years ago at this point. Yeah, I'd say four, five, tops. And but yeah. the thing is, is that so the reason this film first got pushed back was because. Fox wanted them to go in and change a lot because yeah. they told the director to make a horror film or mm -hmm. yeah, they told him to make a horror film and they didn't like it even though he did his job. Yeah. So they then they wanted him much. So then they wanted him to go back in and make it horror, but more like, I guess like a doctor strange. Mm -hmm. Then they never got to do that. They never went back and shot stuff because at that point you got Game of Thrones, you have this, you have that. All these actors were doing something, so you, you couldn't do the reshoots that much because it was pretty much reshooting the whole film. So they just yeah. kept pushing it back and back and back and back, and then they're like, okay, you just do the horror cut. It was good. It tested good. Let's just do that. The only thing I do know is they cut out the ending, and I don't know what they're going to do with the ending because it was supposed to set up for a sequel, and I really hope they did actually cut it out because originally – it's out. It's out there in the world. What it is. I. I don't know if you guys oh, want to know what it is. I, I just. Don't. Okay, then I'll. I'll be quiet. But a major villain was gonna be in it. Oh, I know who it is. Spider Man. You, you've told me. You've told me what it is. Yeah, I don't think it's in the film anymore. They've even I said it's not. I don't because it's uh, it's too big. Um, it's sinister. I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah. With John Mister. Hamm. Mister. Yeah. Mister. But I think. Antonio Banderas is now the villain of the film, and I think that's the thing they changed the most. Yeah. And they and they got rid of Rosario <laughs> Dawson. She was supposed to be in the film too, and they recut that. Yeah. But so they replaced I'm interested. her, didn't they? They replaced her with Elise Spraga. Yes. I think they, they entirely they, replaced but, her. But Rosie her. already filmed her stuff. That's what's weird. Yeah. So I think a, a lot of that is okay. We need to reshoot this stuff, mm -hmm. but we don't have Rosario Dawson available. Yeah. Let's just grab, let's just grab this. So, I dig it, man. I dig it. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, let's talk about this next thing: the PS5 engine Unreal Five. Um, now people need to understand that this engine demo they showed is a demo. It is not a fucking game. It's not a game. I've seen so many people be like, "This is gonna be the coolest game." Ever. It's not a fucking game. It's not a game. It's just but, showing what the hardware could do. Yeah, but I will say this, and I will give the benefit of the doubt. Some games. Some demos do become games. Gears of War was originally a demo, and then it became a game. 
it, that's just how it works. So this could potentially become a game. They probably have ideas about it, but it really was to show the hardware, which this is the first time that I said, yeah, this is next gen. Everything else I'd seen before this, I was like not, it wasn't like exciting me at all. Like I want the next gen stuff, but like nothing, it looked the same. This looks awesome. This yeah. looked awesome. Uh, Donnie, I'm going to start with you. What do you think? Uh, I, I think it looked amazing. Like even like in, in part of like the video that I watched, like they were explaining things. I didn't even like care about like the numbers and stuff. But just, like, everything that they put into it when they were showing, like, the water or even just, like, the – they were talking about how, like, they did the echo thing so they mm-hmm. can, like – they, like, measured how much echo should be in each place. Like, they're just going so deep, and I'm just – I'm ready. I'm yeah. – I, I, I didn't want I – didn't, I, like, I was like, I don't really need a PS5. My PS4 is fine, you know. But after seeing that, like, it kind of it kind of changed the way that I felt. I was – I'm ready. I, I'm ready for the PS5. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what about you, Ren? Uh, I'll, just to make sure, are we talking about the, the, that video that I sent you with the yes. girls flying? Yes. Yeah, I thought it would, looked amazing. I have never played an Unreal tournament game or Unreal whatever. Well, uh, yeah, but you've played a game with Unreal Engine. Right? Okay. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, almost every game uses Unreal Engine. Yeah, and it looks mm-hmm. spectacular. Spectacular. I mean, I know it's not a game, at least at this point, but I really just want to do that that they do in the video. Because uh, I'll be so I'll good. be honest, the game, the 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 engine I'm actually looking more forward to seeing what they push in next gen is the one that they used for uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and Death mm. Stranding, because um, Hideo Kojima he he always makes his own engines when it comes to his games, but he literally went to um horizon zero dawn said this is the best gaming engine i've ever seen and he took that and made death stranding with it so it's really cool it's really cool now let's talk about the most controversial thing uh ren you start this because i'm about to yell at you (laughs) don't yell at me okay we're going to talk about the comments that were said by robert robert patton said about his approach to batman during this pandemic now let me let me just say a few disclaimers before we start we are not going to talk about certain other youtubers who've already talked about this This is our thoughts on what he said we're not going to yell at anyone especially robert pattinson or each other i'm gonna yell at you but i'm gonna fucking yell at you don't um uh okay so before you yell at me let me start so at least people can get a little clue about what you're yelling at me now, I think Robert Pattinson's attitude towards working out during the pandemic is kind of lazy. Do I hate him? No. Do I suddenly think he's going to suck as Batman? No. Do I suddenly, am I suddenly not hyped for the Batman anymore? No. He was already working out before. He already looks great. I wish I looked like him like he does at this point without working out. He's going to do great as Batman. I think his approach is being kind of lazy. You don't have much to do. I think it's great that he's kind of studying the performances and what other actors brought to the role, but I think you should try your best. He, he's not going to look like Ben Affleck did. He's not going he to. He doesn't look, need to. He doesn't, he doesn't need, need to. to. Absolutely. I think he should look the best version of what Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne slash Batman could be. I think he should put in the work. That's. That should be the attitude towards every facet of the character. He's putting in the work toward the performance, the psychological aspects of the Batman. I think he should put in the work towards um, towards uh, the physicality. And there are a lot of people who say, oh, he was joking. He's also like that. He's always like that. I know he's always like that. But the interviewer who was with him didn't think he was joking. That did not come across. And, and Zach, you and I talked about this. Mm-hmm. If he was joking... That's awesome. I am going to laugh. If it comes out that it, that he was joking, I'll be more than happy. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not angry right now. I just think it's, you know, that shouldn't be no. your attitude. But that's no. my opinion. But yeah. I'm not Donnie, angry. Anymore. Donnie, you start. Are you mad that Robert Pattinson isn't working out? Or he says no. he's not working out? No. Do you and, like and him if, Batman? Do you and oh, yeah. really answer this? I, I like okay, him. I was about to fucking like boot him. you the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, I like him. And, and at Batman, I, like, I'm, I'm ready for it. But like, I don't, I don't. I don't think that he just completely stopped working out. Maybe he, maybe if he's, if he is serious, maybe he's not grinding for it. But there's no way that like, just like him as a person, just like if he was been working out like constantly forever, there's no way he just stops dead. Maybe he's yeah. not doing like 
over and beyond and like hurting his body to like try to get to a point that people assume that he needs to get to. I think he looks fine as he is. Batman's not not doesn't need to be like huge, you know. Yeah. He just he looks he looks fit. amazing in the suit. He already looks yeah. amazing in the suit. I mean, that's so just I, the truth. People are just people are like well, really upset about this. I I briefly saw it on Twitter and I just like kind of ignored after I read a couple comments, but it's just weird that people are actually like that upset. Yeah. yeah. About um, somebody else's fair. choice. Like it's not he's not hurting anything. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I just took it as a fucking joke. I think he should at least be working to maintain how he I'll already looks like. Th- you this know? is why I'm saying I think he is. He's just fucking joke. I mean, it's I a so lot good. of these actors. It's in their contract that they have to work out. Exactly. That's so the that's thing. why I can things, see it. The one thing I, I found weird. So the one thing I found weird was that he said that uh, the the trainer from Warner Brothers he gave him a bozu ball and a dumbbell, and he says he's not doing it. And I'm like, but he, he's kind of legally obligated to do it right yeah, and that's why i'm thinking i think he's just joking you know what i, I hope mean? so dude that like, just come across and like his comparison to like james dean uh james dean never had to work out james dean wasn't fucking batman no no <laughs> do you know who he should have compared it to he should have compared it to michael keaton i mean that that's the honest truth yeah. he should have compared it to michael yeah. keaton i would still but, like this i would still have the same stance i have right now but that would be an apt comparison because and this is my all this is always my biggest issue well, not biggest issue, but it's always a nitpick is like these guys get super big or they get super buff. And there's always that one montage sequence of them naked and showing their abs yeah. and stuff. And I just it's never like the Batman v Superman. I fucking love Batman v Superman. I'll probably defend that shit forever. Not not the original cut. Not, we don't talk about that. The ultimate edition I talk about. Ben Affleck did not need that CrossFit fucking montage in there. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't fucking need it in there. You know? Um, Paul Rudd, why did he have to have his shirt off in Ant Man? He didn't. No, we need it. We need it. I don't. I don't. Yes. And I'm gonna say this: we're gonna have a shirtless Pattinson in this movie. I already fucking yeah. know we're going to. But I don't care for it. I mean, maybe okay. I'm not the demographic towards that, so I'll, you know, you know. But I, even during Birds of Prey, I wasn't asking for Margot Robbie to get naked. You know what I mean? Red Born stop. I wasn't. Born I wasn't. Two. That wasn't a part of the story. <laughs> It wasn't a part of the story, so it could have I'm been. going to take you to court on that one. I'm going to take you to court on that one. But it's just, I, I, I'm, I, I mean, it's my, it's my most anticipated movie of the year, or yeah, of same. the next few years. I, I literally do not care for another movie. Like if they were announced Toy Story five tomorrow, I would rather choose the Batman. And you know how much that means, says about me. I love fucking Toy Story. I would choose Batman in a heartbeat right now. Me too. Now, if it was Toy Story three coming out, okay. Something yeah. else would have been different. I probably would have been like, okay, Toy Story, Toy Story three. Yeah, I'd probably go see that one. But Batman's like my number. Like, I'm so excited for this. So, yeah, I think he's gonna do fucking good. So, I, I, I and you know what? Anytime I hear someone shit about it, I just want to cuss them out. I, I just legitimately want to cuss them out. My dad still does not see him as that, and I'm like, yeah, but you don't watch any of his other movies. Show him the Rover. Show him the Rover. The Rover is so good. I think Good Time's the one that actually got him the role. Well, yeah, actually, I, to be I, honest, I, what is he let's seen? be honest, Nolan got him the role. Nolan yeah. got him the role. I mean, that, that's the but honest I, truth. But I do th- still think that the Rover is his best performance. And his best movie. I think Good Time is. I think Good Time is. I, I, I or, like the um, personally, the film that actually made me go, holy shit, he can act, is Lost City of Z. Yeah. That, that, I mean, and here's the thing. I don't hate the Twilight movies either. I think he actually does good for what he was given. I mean, that that's the honest truth. Like, he did what he was told to do in those movies. Yeah. So, let's just move on to this, to the main topic of the event. Top the 10 Dragon event. Ball Z characters. Now, just so everyone knows, it's not going to be like Ren's top 10, Donnie's top 10, my top 10. We're going to make a definitive top 10 list for top 10 Dragon Ball Z characters. Mm-hmm. Guys, it's going to be a tough one. It is. Um. So, but, uh, by I'm the way, s- just before we start, a little bit about why we love Dragon Ball, our experience with it, etc. Donnie, why don't you start? About why I love Dragon Ball? Yeah. yeah. What's your experience with Dragon Ball? How did you start watching it? I think I started around like junior high. My buddy was uh, reading one of the mangas, and then like I, I got a little curious, and I started watching it, and it's just been like game over. Yeah. <laughs> just. Just from like day one, it's just it's just been uh, like hooked, you know. Took over your life. Yes. Zach. 
Um, it, it's funny. So I love Toonami back in the day. Um, did you have Toonami where you were at, Ren? No, we don't. Okay, have, so have so Toonami was like this program on Cartoon Network and it would pop up and then like anime shows would be there. It'd be like blah 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 and new Nisha, Zatch Bell, Naruto, and of course it, you, you would usually end on Dragon Ball. Um, so I remember watching a lot of them and I'm like, this is fucking awesome. And one of my close friends in first grade. I remember distinctly going in his room and his whole room was Dragon Ball. Everything was Dragon Ball. So fucking instantly just got hooked. And, um, you know, I mean, when it comes to my favorite anime of all time, Dragon Ball should probably always be it. But I mean, right now it's Naruto. I I just love Naruto, the shit out of it. But Dragon Ball has always meant something to me because it's, at least when it comes to Dragon Ball Z, it still holds up. It's a really funny and clever show. Um, And I'm always in the minority. I think the first two um seasons are actually might be my favorite um okay. everything with, I with vegeta with um piccolo training gohan i mean those are some of my favorite memories from dragon ball and then i just love how it adds on to the world i mean the thing is is dragon ball might have awesome action sequences but really it comes down to the characters and that's what meant the most to me 100 percent. yeah what about you run uh, honestly, when I think about it, I don't have any memories of of ever not knowing uh, Dragon Ball. I've always known Dragon Ball as far as my memory is concerned, and I've watched it multiple times, like the original Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, which I'm in the minority that I like. I don't think it's the best show, but I, I like Dragon it's Ball It's the GT. only one I, I mean, besides Super, I haven't finished Super, but GT is the one I gave up on. I didn't like it. And and Super just gets literally just gets better with each arc because like the first two arcs are just the remakes of the movies of Resurrection of F and Battle of the Gods. Uh, they add a little bit like because they have more time to cover the stories, but they're essentially the same. But as they go to the tournaments, the Tournament of Power is just. Mm, mwah, I've seen some of the fight scenes. Yeah. Peak Dragon Ball. Um, and and um, Broly it, the big, movie. I, I Broly the yes. movie. I'd say it might be the best Dragon Ball movie. I don't think it's the best Dragon Ball movie, but it's top three for me. It, I mean, I was blown away by seeing that, and I took one of my friends who doesn't watch Dragon Ball, and he loved it. He loved yeah. it. He even told me he was like, and that's the smartest thing about that movie. You don't need to have watched Dragon Ball before. No. Yes, it helps, but it really sets up the world so great. Um, what, so I I, hope, I, what, I, yeah. what I hope they, do, they don't do is that when Dragon Ball Super comes back, which it will come back, uh, they don't just the first arc of the new part of the show isn't the remake of of the Broly. Movie. I really hope they don't do that because the way it ends, like y- you're off, you're off to the races. Just start from there with the new show. Let's discuss so this. It's gonna remake. it's gonna do that because it's anime. I know. And movies don't, don't count unless they're in the show. Yeah. <sighs> but don't. Well, actually, Please, don't. from what I understand, the which I'm not I'm not caught up completely on Naruto, but I didn't know Sasuke lost his arm until my friend fucking told me something about that for Boruto. Well, that <laughs> sucks. But doesn't that happen in like one of the movies he loses his arm? Uh, I've never seen the Naruto movies. Oh, but Donnie, can you answer that or not? I mean, I've seen I've seen the Naruto the Last, which is the the movie that happens after. Yeah, isn't Naruto? that the one he loses his hand on? I don't. I don't no, think he loses no. his arm in any of the movies. He, is, he just I, doesn't have it. In I don't Boruto. even remember him being on Naruto the last, to be honest. Oh, okay. Because I, because he was telling me he was like, yeah, he loses it in one of the movies. No. No. Okay. You, you you ha- you haven't got there yet. Yeah. Just... He loses it on the show. I don't know if he also loses yeah. it on oh, the movies. Okay. But Naruto the last supposedly is canon. And then I watched the first uh, Boruto movie before the show came out. And the the first arc of the show is basically the movie. Typical, typical. Yeah. So let's uh, let's get yeah. to this top ten. So I the best way we're gonna do it is everyone's gonna kind of say their top ten, like okay. everyone they have in there, and then we're gonna argue, okay? Well, not argue, but pretty much come over our definitive list, starting from ten and up. And I think we for this list we can say there will be a number eleven, just to make it like one honorable mention. I think makes okay. sense. Yeah. So Donnie, since you are the guest on the Geeks of the Round Table, you give us your top ten. Ten through one. So starting at ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have Master Roshi as my number 10. Okay. Then 9, I got uh, Brawly. Nice. Okay. So 8, uh, Android 17. Yeah, you have me reading this backwards. It's throwing me off. That's fine. Uh, 
I got Kid Boo. Nice. Yajirobi. Oh, okay. Bulma, Trunks, and Vegeta. Wow. Wait, okay. wait, wait. Was there no Goku or Gohan? No, there was a Gohan. Wait, say it again. Did I, did I not say Gohan? No, I no. Didn't, no, I didn't hear. I didn't hear okay, Gohan. So Roshi, Broly, Gohan, Seventeen, Piccolo, Yajirobi, Kid Buu, Bulma, Trunks, and Vegeta. Okay. Okay, that's then. Uh, Ren, your turn. Okay, so number ten, Pan from Dragon Ball GT. She's awesome. Okay. I don't care what anybody says. Number nine, Broly. And I, I didn't specify whether it is Dragon Ball Super Broly or the original version from the first Broly movie. There's no other Broly movie. He didn't have sequels and Bio Broly <laughs> or whatever the fuck that was. Just like the mad monster. Uh, number eight, Tapion. Number seven, Cell. Number six, Piccolo. Number, number five, and I specified this one, Future Trunks, the one with the sword. Uh, number four, Bardock. Number three, Teen Gohan from the Cell arc. That's the best version of Gohan. I would agree. Uh, number two, Vegeta. And number one, Goku. Perfect. All right, here's mine. Uh, number 10, Beezers. I just love Beezers to death. Number nine, Krillin. I'm really surprised no one else put Krillin. Number eight, Android 18. Number seven, Cell. Number six, Boo. Number five, Teen Gohan. Number four, Piccolo. Three Goku, two Vegeta, and my number one is Future Trunks. Okay. All right. So when you said Boo, do you mean like the fat Boo or just the villain Boo? See, it's fine. I keep them all together in my okay. head. Okay. Um, I just say Boo because I like all versions of him. I don't have like a preference. I and I mean, in a sense, it's like for me, it's just the same thing. Yeah. Um, whereas like I I I legitimately, which I mean, it's kind of hard because all the Boos are really different. Um, yeah. so I would probably go with Kid Boo as my favorite. Um, if we're gonna go, but I don't. I love them all. So, definitive list, guys. Who out of okay? So, let's go to number eleven for us. All right, let's just okay. do an honorable mention right off the bat. Okay. It seems like all of us have at least one person who didn't kind of end up in there, right? Yeah. So let's choose one from our list that no one else said, and we're gonna make a point to why he should be number 11 all right okay. so donnie who do you want to choose from your list for number 11 um yeah Jirobi. okay ren who do you want to choose pan pan all right and i'm gonna choose Beezerus. okay actually oh uh, no wait. Uh. <laughs> i gotta do krillin i gotta do krillin actually okay all right so um i'm gonna let uh ren you start okay pan as much as people don't like uh, Dragon Ball GT, and even I who like it, I don't love it, Pan is the heart and soul of that show. She's everything that makes every bit of that show that is likable and that works, Fucking works gross. because of her, because of her relationship with Goku, because of how tender it is, how much you care for them as uh, with their... Um, oh, why am I missing the terms? Uh, grand, granddaughter, grandfather relationship. She's also a badass. She's no damsel in distress that needs help. She's a character of her own. What? Why are, you just, why are you I, judging a, a cartoon on its beauty? Sorry. Keep going. Okay, I, I just love this character. She's She is the heart and soul of Dragon Ball GT. She makes it work. As much as it doesn't work 100%, she makes it work for the most part. Okay. Uh, Donnie, defend your character. I mean, have you seen Dragon Ball? Yajirobe is just cool. And he's human. He doesn't have any powers, but then he still tries to, like, help out. He cut off Vegeta's tail. Like, he saved the Earth in that episode. That's all that needs to be said about him, bro. I just, I don't, I, it's a good choice. I just, uh, I choose Krillin because it's Goku's best friend. I mean, Krillin has always been there for everyone. He's, he's literally like, just as you say, Pan is the heart and soul of GT. I would say Krillin is arguably the heart and soul of some of the future or the beginning seasons of Dragon Ball. Goku's always going to be the main one, but when it comes to Krillin, he's always fucking there for him. And I think without Krillin, you don't have Dragon Ball. Whereas like Yajirobe, you know, do we really need him? 
no and pan no one likes do you know why her name's pan because she's panned because fucking gt is a panned show no. peter pan is better than pan pan no, the not. movie is better than pan dude how dare you how dare you she is awesome she's the one that believes in her in her grandfather the most she sees the good in people. Every fucking obstacle they encounter on that show, she makes them resolve their issues, and not just through fighting. Yeah, she does fight a lot. She is a badass. She's a ruffian at points, but she sees the good in people. She always ha- tries to help firsthand. I mean, I see it. I also just don't love it. I I think Krillin's the main one. If we're gonna do a number eleven for an honor for a whole definitive DBZ list. I just don't see Pan being involved in there just because GT is not the best. And then Yajirobe, I mean, I like him. Oh, he's just extra. Yeah, but he's no Krillin to me. He's no fucking Krillin. Yeah, I can agree with that. As much as I, I love Pan and, I, and, I, and as a character, I prefer Pan over Krillin, I can't say that a definitive list is going to have Pan over Krillin because... If it's a definitive list, it has to be for everyone, or at least mostly everyone. So mm-hmm. I got to I gotta tap out on this one. I love Pen. I will never say that I don't love Pen, but I would agree that Krillin should be the one that goes to number 11. Sweet. Do you agree with this, Donnie, or you, do you want to argue about Yajirobe more? I mean, there's I said the biggest points of him, so there's not much to argue. But I do agree with what you said, how, like, Without Krillin, there's not really much there. Like, it, if Krillin wasn't there, Goku wouldn't have met all these other people, really, and, like, mm-hmm. had that same connection with each in, like each character. Yeah. So I, I'll give him the 11 spot. Okay. Y'all Sweet. Joke, we can have Sweet. one. So. so Krillin's at number 10. So he's not in the top 10, but he's an honorable mention. So let's <laughs> go to our number 10, guys, which my number 10 was uh, Beezrus. Uh, and whose okay. was your guys's? My, mine was Penn, so I just argued. Okay, so who's your next one? Who's your next one? Broly. Broly, and then what about you? Master Roshi. Okay, I know you guys both had Broly. So do we want to put Broly at number 10 then? Yeah. Be a little bit fair. Yeah, I'd be happy. I don't I don't have Broly, but um I can I can I can dig Broly in there at number ten. Okay. His backstory is just so like interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And he's the one character they honestly Take take away the fact that he came back for a second and third movie. Let's get those out of the way. Uh, Broly technically was never actually beaten. He's the character yeah. that our heroes can't beat. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah. So, all right. So Broly is at number ten um, for a definitive DBZ list. And I and I think the movie is actually the newest movie is the best, the most human Broly we've ever seen. Yes, he's a much better character with more layers mm-hmm. in the new movie i i love the version of the original movie just a fucking goddamn monster that destroys everything yeah. and everyone in its path but as a character as a person that i can understand motivations mm-hmm. and see a, a person a human being there the new one on super is also, a much better character can i say i'm surprised none of us had brisa frieza yeah donnie, uh, donnie I, I, see and i agree i think he's literally the most overrated dragon ball villain I agree, but I, I do love the character. I, think I do he's too. Great. I just think they use him important. too much. I just think they use him yes, too much. Yes, I agree I with that. that. He should have just been him. gone. I don't need no gold Frieza. Yeah, if people, if I people do get think... pissed that we don't have him in here, I would put him at 12. I would argue that yeah. he should be 12 after yeah. Krillin. Because he I is disagree. an important part of I do think at first, when you get to the later parts of Super, and Donnie, I don't know if you have made it to the later parts of Super, when you get to the final arc, the Tournament of Power, you're going to hate it at first because they do bring him back in a way. You're going to hate it at first. But what they do with that character and looking at the whole history of Dragon Ball without spoiling it, it's amazing. I loved it. I cannot wait to see what you what you think. Okay. Guys, number nine. Who was your guys' number nine? Mine was Krillin. Mine was Broly, so I'm going to say my number eight. Okay. My number eight was Tapion. Tapion okay. is fucking amazing. And then what about you? My next one is Android 17. Android 17. Okay, so I had Beezrus at number nine. You guys didn't have Beezrus at all, so I'm just going to get rid of Beezrus completely. Um, Just because also he's probably more important in Super than 
Yeah. And then I mean, I took it as we call it Dragon Ball Z, but I took it as Dragon Ball. Yeah. Um. So my next one would be Android 18. Okay. So I think, in argument's sakes, one of the androids has to be in this part. Yeah, I I still pick Tapion. He trained Trunks. He has one of the most tragic Dragon Ball stories of any characters. If it wasn't for him, there would be no Trunks to defeat Mm -hmm. the androids. He gave Trunks his sword. His theme that he sings with his ocarina is awesome. He has an awesome look. As much as I wouldn't sport that look myself, he has an awesome look. He's just, as much as that movie isn't canon, and for the sake of argument, let's say it is, he's one of the most important characters in all Dragon Ball history. Donnie, what do you think about that? Because here's the thing. You have one of the androids. I have one of the other androids. He does make a good point to why Tapion is so important. So how about we put the androids to the side right now, and we put Tapion at number nine. nine. Yeah. That works. I just want to point out one thing. Huh. He, w- he wouldn't need a train trunks without an android. That's true. Uh, but maybe, but hey, no, I, I agree for the spot. But, I, agree. I just wanted uh, to throw that out but there. That, but that's but, why we're going to keep right. the androids later. We're going to keep the androids for later then. Because maybe we can way, let, just, let me just say something. I am so happy you guys haven't finished Super because otherwise you would have a huge argument for one of those androids against me. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. You I'm have so, no idea. <laughs> start you can't spoil this it stuff. for Zach. You can't spoil it. I don't give a fuck, man. Am I ever going to finish it? Probably not. I'll probably have fucking kids by the time I finish it. Oh, Dude, finish. just finish it. Dude, You're... I don't have the time. Stop watching Naruto. Stop playing video games. I haven't even binge. watched Naruto. Just binge one <laughs> Dragon Ball Super. Okay. I mean, he has uh, been busy. busy. He watched all the Harry Potter movies. Yes. And I think that's time well spent. So I haven't watched all the pirates, too. But, but let me just... You finished Dragon Ball Super, right, Donnie? Yeah. Okay, so... I will support your argument for 17 without spoiling it to Zach. Wait, okay. Android 17 dies? I don't know. Does he? I just found it. What the fuck? I'm going to watch it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Damn, number Guys, by that Hitman looking dude. Oh, Hit. His What's, name is literally Yeah, hit. he's dope. He's awesome. Dude, he was going to be on my list, but so, I, I, I didn't thought of him. Super. I thought of him, too. I thought of Jiren as well. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I need to share my screen because I really like this character, but I don't know its name. Yeah. I just think it's cute. How do I share it? How do Is I share it my screen? Is he going to show, show us Zeno? Oopsies. Oopsies. My camera it's really up. weird not seeing you guys. I don't know where to look. I'm, like, looking <laughs> around my room. And stuff. Can I not share my screen on you? You should be able to, it, like the little two squares, it says share screen. Oh, true. There you go. I love so these I'm not going to see. Do you see them, Ren? No, I can't see oh. anything. I just see you guys. Let me, hang on. Maybe Ren has to accept it. Did he make the call? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did that work? Yeah, yeah, that's Zeno. I love these guys. That's, the god, that's the god above all gods. Isn't yeah. he like the strongest character in the show? Yeah, supposedly, yes. Okay. Yeah, I was like, eh, there's no proof, but yeah. yeah. They say he is. And he's like, he's like a four-year-old child. Yeah. yeah, and there's two of them because one of them comes from, from another universe. I love it. I love him so much. All right, let's go to number eight. At number eight, I had Tapion. So I, I say, let's have you guys discuss who should be a number eight, and I'll Stay out of this one. Um, I'd go as far to say the androids 18 and 17 are combined together. Then, I would then that, they should just that. go. Would you be okay with that, Ren? If we just yeah. made 18 and 100%. 17 both at, at number eight? All right. Yeah. So let's go to number seven, which seven. I think me and Ren had the exact same list, and that's Cell at number seven. Yeah. So. Donnie, I'm sorry, but you're kind of outvoted on this one. Cell has to be at number seven. Are you okay with that? Uh, Yeah. And Cell, just, Cell always scared me, so I always just try to forget about him. Who did you have at number seven? Um, who did we already say? Because I know I just I crossed someone uh, out. So Broly, Tapion, 18, 17 and 18 are on number eight. And then uh, Cell. And then Cell at seven. Who did I just delete? I don't know. I think I deleted the wrong one. Oh, oh, oh shit. Well. 
Broly yeah. was my number seven. Broly was oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, it does right. feel fit- fitting that Cell is right on top of 17 and 18. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, all right, number six. I have Piccolo. Piccolo. Okay, I have Piccolo at my number four. Do you have Piccolo at five. all? Yeah, okay. five. Okay. So let's move Piccolo to six. Yeah. Everyone okay with that? Yeah, that works. I as long as he's on there. Yeah, he has to be in the top ten. <laughs> all right, so number five. Uh, my next one would be Boo. Okay, I'm going to say Future Trunks. I have Kid Boo. Okay, so sorry, Ren. Boo has to go at number five. I, I didn't know that we were allowed to put them together. I literally spent like 10 minutes like thinking, like, which Boo do I want on I here? would do Kid Boo. <laughs> I'd do Kid Boo. I'd do Kid Boo number one. Yeah, if you're rolling between Boos, I, I'd say Kid Boo as well. All right, so Kid Boo goes in. Number six now. Uh, Again, you said Future Trunks. Um, My next one would be Teen Gohan. Okay, my next one would be Bardock. Okay, and Donnie? One, number six was my Gohan. Okay, so I think Gohan also has to go in red. <laughs> I, I Bardock, think so. Bardock should, almost went but, on my list. Too. But he should go on top. He shouldn't be a number four. I'll argue that. I'll say that he should be closer to number one. So do you want to argue that? But who do we want to argue for number four then? Because my next, the only four I have left is Future Trunks, Goku, Vegeta, and Teen Gohan. Well, we can... We can after after we go through them, we can look at the top ten we have and then cut somebody out to put somebody else that was already out in. You know? Okay. I mean we can go back to number five and let's say cut Kid Boo and put in trunks. Because mm-hmm. I because I think Bardock fighting off against a whole horde of the Freeze army, it's like an android fighting an android. So it's like, it's I'm gonna like be honest. I'm gonna universe. be honest. If you want Bardock, I take Tapion out. I think Bardock's more important then. Oh, he is. That's why I so have him number saying. four. So that's why I'm saying maybe we take Tapion out. Because Bardock isn't in the show that much. That That's the only thing. That's the only reason I didn't even think of putting him in there. Is because I don't think he's a... Like, when it comes down to a top ten definitive list, I don't think yeah. he's top five. But honestly, I could even argue... Five? He made sure also, Goku survived. He okay. made sure Goku escaped in so, time. So how about we do this? Bardock goes to number five. Kid Boo goes to number nine. Tapion goes to twelve. To eleven. Twelve. Eleven. No. That's, my best offer is eleven. <laughs> then it's not. Then then Bardock's not in here. <laughs> it has. He has to be. Goku survived because of Bardock. But Tapion does. <laughs> I just That's, don't see Tapion. I know they're fucking pan. That, I already took Pan out. I'll give you Pan is out of the list. <laughs> Dude, come on. Tapion can't be top 11. Top 12. He has 12. to be top 11. He has I, wouldn't even, I don't even know if I'd put him in the top 20, if I'm being honest. Oh, my God. Oh, the this theme alone. This... The theme alone. He is a character alone. with a specific theme. He's that important. They gave him a theme. Okay, how about we do Bardock number 5, take Tapion out for now. We put Kid Boo at number nine, and number twelve is Tapion. For now, we'll come back and argue it later. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll give you for now. So number nine okay. is Kid Boo. Yeah, four. Let's do Future Trunks. Everyone go with Future. Future Trunks, my number one, but I'm good to to put him at four. Okay, who do we put a number? Uh, so number five is Bardock, and then yeah. Future Trunks. And then four will be number Future Trunks. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah, yeah I think Bardock is more important, but I, I can I can go okay. with that. All right, number Future three. Trunks. Number Teen three, Gohan. I'd go Goku. I I go Teen Gohan. That's when Gohan came into his own, um, and yeah, that's when. What a, it was also his peak. I'll say that it was also his peak because after that, it's like eh, whatever they do with Gohan. But we don't have Gohan at all yet. No, not yet. Okay, because yeah. I have him. So lower, I have him lower on my list, but I would agree that Gohan needs a spot. Yeah, okay, so be- Gohan, let's do Gohan at three then. Okay. All right, so we got Goku and Vegeta. This is going to be good because I like Vegeta more than Goku. I like Goku more than Vegeta, but no. Vegeta, Vegeta can't. I mean, there's an argument that Goku wouldn't be the fighter or the man, the character he is without Vegeta. But Vegeta only grew because of the purity of Goku's character. And that is true. 
But that's where I also go to Vegeta's had the best character arc in the whole entire show. I agree. And Vegeta would have got stronger anyways. He was already trying to plan on taking Frieza out himself. and But he died. Yeah. But but Frieza took him out. How many times Goku has Goku died? died? Too. Yeah. But Goku... Fuck it. Goku... Let's just put Yamacha at number one. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Um. I... I think Vegeta number one and Goku number two. I love I love them both. I mean, they're both intertwined completely. Yeah. But I think when it just comes to a character, I think Vegeta is the better written one overall. I think Goku's yeah. had a lot. I think Goku has had a lot of similar storylines. He hasn't evolved. Like, he's he's grown, but, like, as a character, he hasn't, like, got any deeper, you know? He's always I, just been the same. He just likes to fight, and he wants to fight strong people. He cares about his friends, but, like... There's not really. I disagree. I think Goku has as the better arcs overall, and and truth be told, they help each other grow in the better arcs of this show. But I have a suggestion. Would both of you be happy if we have Goku and Vegeta at number one, and then everyone the else fusion? moves up? Yeah, because they also have a fusion. So they could There's, be up they there. They have multiple fusions. They have multiple fusions. They have an unnecessary number of fusions. They, they do. So how would you guys feel about a tie for number one? I'm okay with that. And everyone moves up and then Tapion gets a spot. Yeah. Okay. My well, that's, a, that's, the only, that's the only reason he said that. No, <laughs> it's not. I, I honestly, that was a joke. I didn't even think of that. No, but, I'm okay with that. I think because they're so intertwined, it's hard to yeah. separate them. So our definitive list right now, let's go through one to, all the way to our honorable mention. So number one Goku. is going to be Goku and Vegeta. Two would be Team Gohan, mm -hmm. which I would argue Future Trunks should be above him, but whatever. Three is Future Trunks. Four is Bardock. Five is Piccolo. Six is Cell. Seven is Android 18 and 17. Eight is Kid Boo, nine is Tapion, and ten is Broly, with eleven being Krillin. The only yeah. thing I would actually change in there is I would move Android eighteen and seventeen up above Cell. That's the really? only one I would change. That's the only one I would change. Because okay, I love I'll... Cell, but I think Android eighteen and seventeen are the better characters than Cell. That's the thing, and Ren, you got to take in Don, Super Don, now. Don since will know what I. Yeah, you know, Donnie will know what I mean, but I would agree with 17. I can't tell you why, but I wouldn't agree with he died. 8 or so, over Cell. He died. No, dude, stop searching. Don't spoil yourself. Seriously. I'm not going to remember by the time I get there. But uh, I can't tell you why, and no, it's not because he dies, but 17, I would agree, that becomes eventually a better character than Cell, but not 18. Yeah, but I think they're intertwined. I think so too, but like unlike Goku and Vegeta, there's a huge. Is Cell and Super at all? Is Cell and Super at all? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You think they're gonna bring him back? I know they're gonna bring him back. I hate that. No, you won't. I thought I'd hate it too, but uh, according How do you know to that the they're gonna bring him back. It's in the manga. Oh. Not that I've read the manga, but I've read. How Cell comes back, and I like it. I, I'm not going to say I love it. I won't, I'm not going to say I would. Uh, I'm not going to say this is the only way to to go on Super. Like, but it's cool. The way they bring him back, it's cool. Okay, I'm down match. for it. So I think we have our <laughs> so we have our definitive list, correct? We have our definitive list, gentlemen. All right. All right. So you making so... a, you making a a picture of this? You're gonna put yeah. together like a like an image? Yeah. For for the thumbnail. Yeah, All right. And then um number twelve, I, I would like to say I think twelve should be Frieza. Just because he yeah. is important overall. He is. But when I it agree. comes you know, yeah. I don't know. I, I think he has to be top fifteen just because of his legacy. Yeah. I agree. So number twelve is Frieza. Number eleven is Krillin. Yep. Number ten, the legendary Super Saiyan Broly. Number Nine, Tapion, the main character from the best Dragon Ball movie, The Wrath of the Dragon. Uh, number eight, Kid Buu, which is the best version of Buu. Number seven, Android 17 and 18. Number six, Cell. Number five, Piccolo. Number four, Bardock. Number three, Future Trunks. 
number two, Team Gohan, and number one, Goku and Vegeta. Are we all happy, gentlemen? Yes. All right. And Donnie, are you happy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to believe you. <laughs> and that's our show. That's our list. That's the definitive character, the list of, of best Dragon Ball characters. Donnie, thank you so much for joining us. Tell the people where they can find you. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, man. And you can find me, I'm on pretty much everything at uh, Bearded119 on Twitter, Instagram, all, all that all that good stuff. Uh, all right, and we will have links for Donnie and for my links and for Zach's links. They're all in the description. Zach, where can the people find you? Uh, just type in Zach Pope anywhere, man. You guys can find me all over there. Me and Donnie have t-shirts you guys should go buy. Yes. Please. Please. Yes, yes they Please. do. Uh, and you guys Please. can find me. <laughs> we got another one coming out sometime soon. Yeah, I'll probably put it up in the next week or so. Yes. Can you tease the look of the t-shirt? Well. Or do you want to? Well, I'm actually, I'm going to do an Ask Me Anything today, and it'll be in the corner. And I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty classy, uh, if I, if I yeah. would say yeah, so we'll myself. Yeah, we'll leave it there. We'll leave that, it there. That Ask Me Anything. <laughs> That Ask Me Anything will already have happened when this show goes up, so go check it out. I am Ren Geekness everywhere, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us all out. All our links are in the description. And so until the next show, love each other and love the movies.